Today, we're gonna be making over this gorgeous vanity. This vanity is in really good condition. The wood looks good. I mean, it's a little dull, but it looks good. And then the only real issue that I see with this vanity is the trim is missing on those ornate details, but that's an easy fix. I actually tried to give this piece away to a few people and nobody wanted it. Because believe it or not, I don't paint every piece. If it's in good condition, um, there's always somebody who will take it. But when no one will take it, if I don't give it a makeover and add a little paint, it's gonna end up in the garbage anyway. So that tells me it definitely needs a makeover. Now, I love the original design and the feel to this piece. It has kind of like, like a cottagey, like a woodsy cottagey um, vibe to it. Like I picture if, <laughs> if Snow White was real, this would be her vanity. So I wanna keep that essence to it, that cottagey feel. I love the natural, I love the wood. Um, but I want to spruce it up. I want to bring that wood back alive, add a little paint, add a little shine, make those details pop. So let's flip it. The first thing I need to do is fill in some of the missing trim. I love using this quick wood putty. I just take a little piece off and I knead it like it's dough until it turns white. And then I can fill in that piece and form it. I have about 10 to 20 minutes working time with it and then it starts to harden and it hardens like a rock. I take a little piece and I just place it on there. If it doesn't stick, I can use some finishing nails to stick it to, but since I have those two sides, um, I can just stick it onto those and it will stick just fine. Now I play around with it for about 10, 10 minutes just trying to um, form it as best as I can and the trim isn't perfect so I know that it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Then I flip the piece over and I'm looking at the back. I want to take the mirror off of the piece so that I can paint it and I don't make a big mess. You can tell just by the way that this is made that it's pretty old. So we're gonna treat it with care and I'm gently gonna take out the screws. I kinda love how this was built. Now I'm taking off all the hardware and I'm just gonna clean it up with some Dawn dish soap. I know that I'm gonna use gilding wax and keep the original hardware. I do find that there are two pieces of the hardware that's original and then two pieces that are not original and you can see that right here. One's a little bit brighter, it's a different design, but somebody, whoever had this before, um, my friend had it, they actually matched it up pretty good. So now I'm using Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner to clean the piece up. I have to use my gloves for this because it has some TSP in it, which is a chemical. Um, I go all the way to the back to make sure that I get any gunk or junk out. We just want to make sure that it's super clean. And then I am using Dixie Belle's Boss, which it, it covers odors and it covers um, any tannins or bleed through or stains that might come through. I don't really know that this was necessary for this piece because there is a really good um, like shell-like finish already over, but you know, just in case they used, just, I don't know what kind of cleaner was cleaned with this, I just, I don't know. So just for, it's like insurance, just for protection, I added this primer and I did two coats waiting for it to dry in between coats. Now I'm only gonna paint this section, this middle section of the vanity. And that's because I wanna keep the rest of it um, with the natural wood. And I am taping off the parts inside the drawers where I don't want painted. I like the nice clean lines. Now for the color I chose, it's Dixie Belle's new color, English Ivy from the Cottage Collection. I was gonna use 
um, evergreen. But when they, at the same time I was gonna do this piece, um, they came out with the new colors and I completely fell in love with English Ivy. And I think it was a better choice with the natural wood. And I will tell you why, because, okay, say Palmetto, I feel like Palmetto is a little bit darker and that goes really, I've paired it with Walnut a couple times, but because this, um, this wood is not a dark wood, it's in the medium range, I think that this English Ivy actually pairs really well with this type of wood because it's sort of muted. Um, the evergreen is very similar to this color, but the evergreen pops. It, it's like, it's a little bit brighter where there is this muted um, feel to the English Ivy. And I just thought it was super, super funny that it came out around the same time. It was meant to be in my eyes. And I will tell you, as I'm applying it, I apply it with my water mister and my brush. I'm trying to get a really nice finish. I don't want there to be lots of brush strokes. Um, that is why I use a lot of water. But as I am starting to apply it, I'm kind of freaking out that it's so bright. <laughs> and I'm so like wondering if I made a mistake. But I had this vision for this vanity in my head for a really long time. So it's one of those things where I just really, I had to trust the process. And my, I complained to my husband for about two days um, about the green. Did I just mess it up? Did I make a huge mistake? And he tells me, you do this every single time. Stop it. Trust the process. Just do it. So that's what I did. Now, after I painted it, it took about three coats to cover it. I used my spray gun and I gave it three coats of satin. Now you can see I'm only painting this middle section of the vanity. I'm not doing the mirror. I'm not doing the legs. I'm not doing the, um, the top, just this middle section. So I waited like two hours in between coats um, before I did anything else. My next step is to add the Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in brown. This is where I wanted to give it that woodsy, kind of darken it up. I want this to be, I love that, I don't know, that dramatic look. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's like gothic because it's not gothic. I just, hmm, I can't put my finger on it, but I love the style. It's just sort of a darker, you know, you can take this pop of color and darken it up with the wax. And here I'm just testing it out. I, I'm trying to figure out, do I just want it in those details or do I want the whole thing waxed? So Dixie Belle's Besting Wax is water-based. Um, I love using this wax because it's like a decorative finish for me. I don't use it to seal my piece, but I use it for these, um, these like accents. I use it as just another really fun, like I would use gilding wax, just a new way to spruce up the piece. And I sealed the piece first so that I can manipulate the wax better. I have way more control over it. You can remove it with such ease. If you only, if you put the wax right on top of the chalk paint, it's really hard to remove because it sticks to it like glue. So. I mean, you can remove it, just use your clear wax with it, but that's, that's a whole thing. So if you just seal it first, then you can easily, you know, put on or remove your wax. And over the years, I figured out like, you know, different brushes make different looks. Um, if I wanted it to get in the details, I would use my French tip brush, something pointy. And as you can see, I'm using a dry brush that I didn't use just a clean dry brush to kind of take some of that wax buildup off. I don't want it to look uh, super waxy. Like I don't want, I just want the wax to sort of darken the color. You know, I, I'm looking for that shadowy look, not, oh, there's just dirt and wax all over. No, I, I just, I'm creating shadows. And sometimes it seems like you're just putting it on and then wiping it back off, but I'm not. It's, it, I'm just manipulating the wax the way that I see it in my head. And you know, 
play around with the tools, play around with the brushes. You can get totally different looks. I don't like that super distinct. Um, here's the wax. The wax is right around the, I, I like it to be blended. And actually, if you watch this, you'll see exactly how I blend my wax. So on the larger areas, I'm just putting it on and I'm swirling it. I'm not sticking it in the corners or you know anything like that. I'm just swirling it over the piece. And then I'm gonna take some of it off with that dry, clean brush. It's pretty incredible all the different looks that you can get just by using a different brush or a different hand motion, you know, and, and you won't really figure it out until you play around with it. Like here I'm swirling the dry brush before I was moving it back and forth in the front. Now for this, I'm just swirling it because I want it to look like a blended, uh, just like almost like it's just part of the piece, like it was part of the green. It's just blended darker shadows. And here's an example of what it looks like without the wax and then with the wax. I like for you to see it like, you know, you can see that really polished look and then that sort of that artistic look on it. And now for the raised details, we're gonna add the bronze gilding wax. And I use my finger for this. You could also use a brush. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I, I like, I feel like I have a little bit more control when I'm using my finger. So I'm gonna also use it on the details on the legs and I also use it on the details on top of the mirror. For all of the wood sections, I'm using Big Mama's Butter. <laughs> it is a salve. Um, it smells super good. This one is Orange Grove. And I'm just gonna use this to polish up that wood. You know, I'm not sure if someone had used furniture polish on this previously to keep it in such good shape, the, the wood on the top here, but that is definitely something you wanna be careful about if you're just painting over something. If it did have uh, wax on it or like an oily polish, you would wanna use some mineral spirits to wipe it down before painting. But since we're not painting this section, I'm just gonna use this salve. I put the salve on, I wait about 20 minutes, and then I wipe wipe it down, any excess. And then the next day, I give it a nice wipe down again, just in case anything's sitting over the finish. And um, it, it just keeps it clean. It, it makes it look polished. It brings it back to life. You can actually see it in when I'm doing the legs. I'm gonna come, that's not done, that's done. That's not done. I mean, that's a pretty big difference bringing it back to life and it does provide a seal for it. I think you can reapply the salve like every three weeks if you want, but it's not necessary. I just thought, you know, it would make it look nice. <laughs> it would bring it all together. It, the wood's in great shape, great shape with or without it, but it's just an extra step I could take. So then for that top, I finished that with bronze and then I, I thought, you know what, that bronze isn't enough. So I did add some of the golden gilding wax to make it pop a little bit more. And I added a tiny bit of the gold to the hardware also just to make it pop a little bit more, to brighten it up. And here's a reminder of what we had before. It was great, but it needed a little something. Here it is with the little something. And look how nice and polished our wood is. And then all of these, the gilding wax on top of those details, just, I, it brought it out so much. It's a huge difference. You wouldn't, you couldn't really see any of the details before. I was pretty nervous about adding the green to it but I am really glad that I just stuck it out and went you know I finished it up and I think it turned out really nice let me know what you guys think down in the comments 
and I will see you next time with another furniture makeover.